Good morning, Stanton, and welcome. How are you today? This is another tutorial video. This one is on hand mining in the 3.15 live version of Star Citizen. I'm uh, putting out two videos, a shorter version, kind of just the really the basics, and this one going into a little bit more depth of what you need to do, what you should avoid, what you can bring with you, and what you are looking for when you're in hand mining. Also, exploring a brand new type of cave, and I was super excited to do this because I have never checked out this particular type of cave before, and I have to admit, I was blown away. It was amazing. Uh, I'm still just amazed by every little bit of this game that I find something new, something awesome to discover, and this is definitely one of them. So here we are, we're gonna start out with just getting ourselves suited up, and we're gonna go hand mining, getting a little bit of UEC to start out when you're a new player in the verse. So because of the new inventory system, it is quite easy to lose all your items. So when you're buying items, sometimes it's good to have a couple spares if you can afford them. What you need to do hand mining is a multi-tool and the mining attachment. Those are the two main tools to need, but you also need something to store all the items that you're going to be collecting. So you need a piece of chest armor and a backpack. Now the chest armor will have a bit of storage on it. You can also get leg armor, it'll have some storage on it. But the chest armor is really what you need to attach the backpack to. Now there are different sizes and you can always go a size down for a backpack. So a larger backpack will only fit on a larger armor. It will not fit on a smaller armor. However, small backpacks will fit on anything. So you need the backpack, helmet, undersuit, your armor that you're wearing to hold the backpack, and your multi-tool. After that, you can get oxy pens, health pens, maybe a healing tool, food, water if you want that, and quick flares. But I'm really just doing, doing the basic right now and just getting, uh, in this video, just using the multi-tool and doing some storage to see how much I can find in a cave. Now the easiest way to find a cave, as opposed to just going to the known caves in the verse, is to accept a investigation mission. Investigation missions are usually looking for a person lost in a cave. So look at them and see if it tells you that there's a cave there. It'll also tell you if it's a cave that can be accessed on foot, which are the old style caves, or one that might be accessed by a vehicle or a ship. So the first one I saw was for Hurston Cave, and I did accept this one, although I never normally accept this one, and I'll show you why if you see one that says Hurston Cave. I'm going to fly to it now and take a look at the cave. So we're coming up on the cave here and you can see it's right on the edge of the ocean. If you see your cave is in this location, this is the cave that you cannot complete your mission at. You can't even fly into this cave and land your ship because your ship will explode. And the reason why is because it's glitched out where the proximity to the water means that the cave is actually full of water and there's no way to actually enter it currently. I don't know if there's going to be either the cave hopefully will get fixed or if maybe they're going to have some sort of underwater component in the future but currently trying to land is impossible so I walk down here just to kind of show you it's very hard to see but the water goes right up to the surface so you cannot enter this cave which is too bad because this would be kind of an interesting cave to check out but it's definitely not one that's going to work so the next one I found was a cave on another moon so I accepted this one this one said that it was accessed by ship. I've only seen the ones you could drive through, not the ones that you can access. But I decided I would try this one out. I was very excited to kind of see one of the new caves. I flew as close as I could get to the cave. You couldn't jump directly to it, but I jumped to the closest orbital marker and then just started flying to the cave. Only about 300 kilometers out, so it didn't take long. Getting closer, once you're near the cave entrance, the marker will go away. And at nighttime, that makes it incredibly hard to find the cave. What I ended up doing is I just turned on my lights, hitting L, and just kind of scanning the surface and hoping I'd find it. But I, it's actually pure luck that I that I was close enough to, to see it. But I, I was remembering where the marker was while I was traveling. So you can see here the lights are off. I can't really see the cave. Uh, hitting tab allowed me to kind of send out these pulses and kind of see the ground. I was hoping that it would show up there, but it didn't really. Uh, but when I turn the lights on, you'll see that I, I, I lit up the ground. I'm able to kind of use like a spotlight and find the location. So there the lights are on and I'm kind of scanning the surface. I can barely see the surface but I'm looking around trying to find the location of the cave. There I saw kind of a, an interesting shape ahead when I hit tab so I'm flying forwards aiming down a little bit 
and there we are. The cave is coming to view. Look at that. Oh, I was so excited to see this. I've never checked out one of these caves before, and I thought it would look kind of cool. I had a, no idea how massive this hole actually is. This is one of the most impressive caves I have ever seen in Star Citizen, and I loved it. I'm definitely going to come back here and do some more hand mining. It was actually quite easy. Uh, I set myself a one hour limit, but I could have easily made way more money on this cave. So this was awesome. Look at the size of this cave. When I get in there and I like look up, first of all, there's this hole there. You can see this hole way down into the surface. And I didn't even go there because there's a flat uh, a ledge that I could land on. Um, you'll notice a few times there'll be little diamonds popping up. Those are the hand mineables that are in the cave so my, I'm passively picking them up. You can see when, I, when I'm going around you'll see some of them start to show up that I, that I can aim for when I'm going to go to land. So I'm just trying to find a nice landing spot here getting a little bit lower just really kind of exploring the cave but look at this. Look at this cave. There's all those mineables I was talking about. They're all popping up there all about uh, like about 100, 200 meters away. All those diamonds are mineables. All those diamonds are just ones that I've picked up in the close range to the ship passively but there's definitely ones further away so I'm just looking around this looks kind of flat but you can see it just keeps going down and down and down so I couldn't believe this cave it was just a little terrifying to come look at the edge because I there's a sense of loss now with the new inventory system that you may lose things but I'm setting down and I'm gonna go kind of start exploring hopefully find the person I'm looking for for a little extra bonus but if not really I've set myself the time limit to just see how much different things I could uh, find and I can mine. So once out of the ship just looking around exploring this ledge and this is just the ledge and it's just huge and you can barely see uh, outside because it is nighttime. Uh, would have been really cool in daytime just to see the light streaming through there but I'm coming to the edge and kind of looking down and it just keeps going. I couldn't believe how much bigger this is than any of the original caves or even the cave that you can drive through just the sense of scale in this is pretty incredible so I'm just enjoying kind of exploring a bit but I'm also looking for passages here wondering if this ledge leads anywhere or if it's just a ledge in the cave but then you can see up here I'm starting to see some openings and I can go pull out my scanner so hold a or tap forward to bring out your scanner uh, when you are in this position here, where you can see the, the scanning mode is open, it's actually actively looking for rocks that will be highlighted when you, when you can see them. But you should be able to visually learn what a lot of the rocks are uh, just by, by seeing them. However, there's been a few times where this has really helped out where a rock that it might not have noticed, especially if it's kind of dark, is kind of blended in and this is highlighted. Also, tapping T on your keyboard will put on your helmet so you can you can see so here there I've just tapped T and now my helmet's on and I can I can see everything I'm doing making sure everything looks good so looking around for a while uh, trying to remember which way you're going uh, maybe keep a rule of always you know keeping to the left or keeping to the right uh, just kind of taking a little look around. I didn't want to go too far uh, in my initial scout just to kind of see uh, how how many different rocks I could find or how many different passageways. Uh, if you're ever wondering how much time you have left as far as breathing and oxygen, just tap uh, F1 on your Moby Glass and it'll show up there how much time you have left. Also, uh, if you go into a ship, it'll refill your oxygen. So here's a rock here coming up. You can see it outlines in yellow. This one here, Aphrite, which is fairly easy to mine, about half the price of Hadnite, but still, some people say don't bother, just always go for Hadnite, but if you're this close to your ship and you can just take the, the gems and put them back in your ship, why not mine? So I'm starting to mine, most wheeling up 100% until it gets into the green, then I'll have to like control it, most wheeling up or down, or turning the beam on and off to, to make sure that I don't go into the red. If it goes in the red too much, it looks like it's going to fill the entire red bar up, back up so the explosion doesn't injure you or perhaps incapacitate you or even kill you. So we're just letting this fill up, letting it mine, and now we're in the green zone and it's starting to fill. So I'm kind of, you can see scrolling down, my power has gone down quite a bit. 
and then it'll most will back up to kind of keep it between those two lines until the green bar fills all the way. If it drops back down, it'll start to go back, so you have to get back into the green zone again, which you will see a few times here. But I'm just pulling in uh, all the gems. I'm gonna, I'm gonna once they explode, I'm gonna hold F on the gem. So in order to put away your multi tool, hold R to, to holster it, and then hold F and store, and just start storing all the items into your backpack. So they're immediately going to go into your backpack. You don't have to worry about where you're storing them. It starts filling up your backpack and then your armor would happen after that. So you can see now I have found Dolivine. Dolivine is a lot harder to mine than Aphrite. It's a lot more unstable. You'll notice the bar moves up and down a lot quicker. Worth the same amount as Aphrite. Uh, which is half the amount of Hadnite, but again, not incredibly hard to uh, mine this rock. So I, I kept mining this rock, and I'm going to add this to my collection. Anything that I find, I'm collecting and putting in, just to show the different prices. Uh, but I always say, if you're close to your ship, just mine everything. Mine everything, put it in your ship, head out, do a little more mining, because this cave was full of rocks, and I could have made quite a bit of money had a good time exploring this cave and with a friend this would be a really fun cave to kind of just explore around in it and see uh, where you could go and, and how big it actually is because I don't believe I even just scratched the surface of this cave. So the bar is filling up almost full. Once it's full we'll collect all these rocks and we'll put them into our backpack along with the other ones. So there you can see I went in the red a little bit so I backed away just in case uh, because while it's in the red, when it drops down the green, it might still uh, explode, so you have to be careful. So we'll pick up all these rocks and then we'll keep, keep exploring. So this is an example of why having your mining tool out is useful because I would not have seen that rock from that distance but it just lit up enough for me to go and check it out. On my way there I see these little white things. There's a few different types of items that you can also collect uh, to sell and these are one of these are I think some sort of dung from some animal that's currently not in the game but the dung is there. You can collect this and you can sell this. Normally I say don't collect this. Uh, you'll see later how it's it's pretty much worthless. The amount of space it takes up versus what you get for it, currently not worth it, although maybe the prices will change later. But I'm collecting everything I can now just to show you can make money from all the different items. So if you have the space and you're heading back to your ship, maybe collect it then, otherwise it's usually not worth it. Uh, you'll notice there someone was asking about stacking and how things stack, and I'll talk about that later. But there's the rock here. This one here is another aphorite. You can see it's kind of purple. The dolivine's red. The uh, uh, Hadonite tends to be more like a pinky color, so you are starting to recognize just the splotches on the rock. So even without your tool, you'll be able to see them. But we're just uh, we're just going to mine this one. You can see it's got a, a lower threshold, so it took a little bit less time in order to to get into the zone to to mine it. So once we've mined this, we'll keep looking. So here is a, another collectible. You can see it's this blue little splotch with these little gross on it. So I, I grabbed these as well to see how much uh, these make you. Uh, not a lot, but again, you don't need to mine anything. You just walk along, you can start picking these up. There are a bunch of them all over, so I started grabbing them. So here we are mining Hadnite rock. This is a, a nice large rock. The Hadnite is what you're always looking for because the Hadnite is what is most valuable. So if you're looking at trying to make room in your backpack, you have to leave something behind. Da basically anything can be left behind in place of the Hadnite that you mined because this will be making you the most money. So Hadnite, the nice purpley pink rocks here, that's what you're going for. So you'll see here this large mound. This is something you should look out for in all the caves. This was a large rock with mineable rocks inside it. So you can see there's like a Hadnite here, there's Dolivine, Aphrite. There's a whole bunch of them and I found a few of these mounds. So these mounds here are great producers of mineable rocks. So when you see one of these from the distance, come up to it and check it out because all around the whole perimeter 
were rocks that I was able to mine. So this was a definitely uh, one of the big money makers that I found a couple of these in this cave. So I was very happy to find this, and once I knew what to look for, it was very easy to find more of these. So coming around the corner from distance, this is what they look like. This is one of the mineable mounds of rocks. So all those are a bunch of different mineable rocks all on the surface. Once my backpacks were full, it was time to head back. Now, it's fairly easy to use your ship beacon in order to kind of give you at least a directional heading so you know which way to go. If you have to duck, you can hit uh, left control. If you need to actually lay down and go prone uh, to squeeze through an area, which I will show you later, uh, you can uh, hit X to do that. Now, you saw there I glanced up. You could see the sky through the hole in that cave. What a beautiful view coming out of the cave and seeing the ship and seeing the space up above. So once I'm in the ship, hit I for inventory, and I was going to unload my cargo. Now this is where there is currently an issue, and hopefully this is one that gets fixed, is that when you pick up an item individually, I don't know why, maybe it's getting its own metadata, but every individual piece that you pick up is separate. It doesn't stack uh, as opposed to something like a rock where you can pick up items by sucking them up and they tend to stack. Uh, at least they did before. I'm going to check that and see if that is the case in my next video with mining. However, what I had to do here is individually drag each piece over, which is very annoying. A better way to do it was maybe have two backpacks and just take this backpack off and put a new one on because this took a while to unload my backpack just to make room. But you can see here the Hadnite, the dull vine, the little like gross and the dung that I found. I'm just loading them all into my ship inventory. Uh, you have to be careful that you don't uh, just swap one piece out for another, which I did a couple times, but this took a bit. Uh, wasn't really the best way. I, I wish there was an easier way to do this right now, but unfortunately if you're hand mining until they fix this, until you can at least stack your items and then you'd have to just move three things over, this is what you have to do. But you can see there's quite a bit of space. My ship inventory, I've, I'm at like 4% of my inventory for my ship where I'm unloading half my backpack already. So you could put quite a bit of gems in here. So this is definitely a way to, to get back out there and keep working. Once I was done mining that area for a little bit, I really just want to kind of explore deeper in the cave before I left. So we're at about maybe a 45 minute time. Now you'll notice when I first got the ship, it was very bright out the window. Uh, that's because I had my headlamp on. So I had to get out of the pilot seat, tap uh, T, and then get back in the pilot seat and I was able to see where I was going. But at the time it was very, very bright. So here we are, we're flying over the large hole and I thought I would aim down. This is where I'm starting to kind of get annoyed about not turning off my headlight, so I'll have to be doing that later. Would have been a lot easier to fly without your headlamp on. So remember to turn your head headlamp off before you get into your seat. But I flowed down and look at all the mineables just popping up in this area here. There is a ton. And this, you can see here, I think this is where I decided to turn my headlamp off. So stood up, tap T, got back in the seat. Made it so much easier. So. I'm really glad I did that because also it makes it easier for everyone here watching and seeing what I've done. But you can see a mineable rock right in that ledge there. Looks like it uh, might be Hadonite, might be Aphrite. You could scan it. Uh, I wasn't really that concerned because I wasn't going to try to get over to that. But what a cool cave. This is lower down than where we were originally. We're coming right down to the bottom of the cave. Uh, just going to find a nice landing spot here and we're going to check out what else is down here so lower down nice and easy and we're just gonna head into that area over there found my place wanted to land thought I would kind of check out the like stalactites everything look at all the mineables there all those gems, all those rocks are just full of gems. So, nice landing. Always remember, hit I when you land to turn off your engine so that you're you're not wasting fuel as well as potentially having something bug out and your ship flies off the ground. Uh, I accidentally hit U there, I think, instead of uh, I, so I turned the entire uh, ship off, but turn it on again, turn the engines off, hold Y to get out, and we're gonna go explore. I think I was trying to find a nice flat place. So 
So we've stopped here. Did you see how many mineables are there? That is crazy. So get out of the ship. Remember to turn your engines off so that your, your ship is off, but you can leave the lights on so you can still see what you're doing. Take the backpack. Uh, what I was doing there was maybe kind of checking to see if things stayed in the backpack. I was really hoping that anything that you were transferring was not uh, uh, was was not persistent, so you'd be able to move the whole backpack, but that was not the case. So now we're going to head out of the ship. We're going to head deeper into the cave uh, just to kind of explore and see all those mineables, see if we can find them, see where they're located. But we left our ship lights on, give us a little bit of a visual. You can always hit your helmet light key, T, in order to, to see some more. But uh, I didn't actually do any mining here as much as just exploring. Although if I had found a large amount of nodes, you can be certain that I would. But look at that. Look at how high the roof of this cave is. That is crazy. I just, if it was daytime, I would, just, I would love to see the light streaming through this cave. But that's where we started, way up there. And now we're down here at the bottom. We're going to go down through this little opening that I found. And so we hit the T, hit the light on. And we're just going to kind of explore deeper into here just to kind of see what's around, see if we can see any, any rocks to mine. So a little more things you can collect there, but just kind of ignore them. Coming through here. And nice. Nice little opening here, and look at that. There is a quick flare that is against the cliffside there. So seeing that tells me that I was probably on the right trail. If I had kept it up and kept exploring here, I'd be finding, um, I'd be finding our missing person. But uh, I didn't keep going farther in the cave because of the one hour limit I sent, I, I had, uh, set for myself. So here's an example of uh, crawling. So if you hit uh, X in order to go prone, you can fit through the narrow spaces and crawl around. So here I am actually heading, I believe, back out of the cave. Or no, this is still going deeper in. This is where, uh, on the other side of the crevasse, look at this cool cavern full of these glowing, I don't know, funguses or something. Really neat. Oh, it was so beautiful in here. I would love to just keep exploring this cave. So I'm definitely going to come back to this cave. Definitely going to check it out again, maybe find our missing man, but just thought I would go around and just kind of look around this cave a little bit. So as I explored this cave, there was one more thing that I, I wanted to show you, and that's these kind of yellow moldy cliffs. These are climbable cliffs. Go up to them without your multi-tool on, hit spacebar, you climb, hit spacebar, you climb. I have one here, an external view, so you can kind of see, able to get up. So if you're ever trapped in a hole, look for those. Those are the areas that you can use to climb up and get yourself out. And this here just blew me away. Like the silhouette, oh, this is why I don't understand how people can't just be in love with this game like me, because I just, this is what I love. I love the, the, the beautiful, crazy areas that I'm finding and so this cave I just was enthralled with uh, even now just watching this this uh, footage again I just I just love being in this cave and so you can see uh, there was the quick flare off to the side there the quick flare uh, was marking the entrance where I had to lay on my stomach to get through in order to head back to the ship so we're gonna leave this now and we're actually going to uh, leave and go to Microtech. So I'm not going to show you me flying to Microtech. Instead, I'm just going to start in the uh, uh, the sales office, so the administration office where you can sell your mineables. And the reason why I went to Microtech and not a space station is purely because of the expo that was on. I figured I'd just return back to the expo so that my next day I'm starting there. But normally I would go to a space station much faster, much easier. So here we are in one of the terminals in Microtech. And we're just going to go and sell our goods. So you go to the terminal, click sell, and then you're gonna go to destination. And so we have the Nomad here, and we can see we have all the different items. So we have this like weird growth. We sold that for 263. So there you go, not worth much. 20 of them was $263, not much at all. 
Uh, that's why they're not worth picking up. Those weird groves, the weird dung, the white stuff, 19 of them was 836. Again, not really worth it. Why would you spend all that time just for getting those little things? But if you have the room, sure grab them. Now we're going to go on the Aphrite. Now Aphrite here, you can see we have uh, Aphrite, Dolevine. So the Dolevine, we have 31. We can sell that for 4,030. Not too bad for 40 or for 31 units. So we're going to sell that. The Aphrite, we have 77. So it's going to be a little bit better. Or sorry, 72 for 10,980 UEC. So we're already at like 12,000 UEC. And then we're going to the last one, the Had Knight. So I got kicked out, timed out. So we got to go back into it, go to sell. Had Knight, we only have 20. Uh, nine had night, but look at that. It's almost as much as the 70 whatever we had the 70 something of Afrite. You get 7,975 UEC. So that is it. That is all we got for hand mining in one hour. Definitely, I could have made a lot more. I could have made so much more money hand mining uh, in that cave, but I had set myself a one hour limit from, from taking the assignment to taking off to landing in the cave and exploring. So not a, not also to get back to to New Babbage. That was the after one hour I stopped mining and I was done. I just wanted to see how much you can make in that first hour, and it wasn't too bad. So all said and done, for an hour of mining, and flying and exploring that cave and having an awesome time, I also came out ahead, twenty four thousand eighty four UEC. Not bad. I mean, there's definitely better ways to make money and hand mining is not the way to make money but it is definitely a different way to make money and a good way to kind of explore a cave and if I'd found the uh, the missing person you make some bonus if I kept exploring the cave and taking all the different materials I could find out of the cave you could actually do quite well but per hour doesn't really pay well but it is super fun to explore super fun to do something different and that's why I enjoy can uh, hand mining so this is really an introduction to hand mining, something to try. Uh, the only complaint I really have it currently is that the items don't stack. That you pick up gems and they don't stack. Hopefully that gets fixed. It has not always been the case. Uh, and in the new inventory system, it's been kind of touch and go whether or not it's working right. But right now it seems to not be working. But but that's it for hand mining. Uh, we're going to go next to still going after Hadnite, Dolvine, Nafrite. But we're going to be using a rock for the next mining video. And we're going to just see how that works in the new 3.15 version of Star Citizen. So until then, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon in the verse. Goodbye.